Hey everyone, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio. This video is a companion to our blog post on uh, making Text Mesh Pro responsive to language localization switches. And you can go over to our page and get the files at the bottom of the article to follow along. And what we'll be doing is creating a, uh, an environment where you can switch your language and the fonts will switch automatically. Now the reason you want to do this is in the instance where you've got a language that has a character set that isn't supported by your font. So we'll switch back to wrong one here. Uh, we'll switch back to just normal. And uh, what you get when you don't have the characters that the language requires, you'll get these placeholder blocks. And so you'll need to switch to a different font. And in this example, I just switched it all to a single font that does not contain Cyrillic. Now, this isn't a perfect example because a lot of the fonts out there do contain the Cyrillic alphabet. But if your language requirements have characters that aren't supported, uh, this is where this comes in handy. So let's get started and explain this a little bit. First off, we're obviously going to be working with TextMesh Pro. And in this example, I'm using the M2H localization package. And uh, you can get that on the Assets Store. This method should work with pretty much any localization. There's really only one requirement that you be able to determine when you're switching your fonts. And uh, obviously, that's what localization packages are for. We won't be going into how to use TextMesh Pro. Uh, Zolran on his YouTube site has plenty of information covering all of the ins and outs of TextMesh Pro. So if you're looking for how to use TextMesh Pro, this is not the video for you. So when you download this sample file, you're going to get two scripts, basically. One's going to be a language manager, and then the other's going to be the responder for localization. And it's pretty simple to implement. Your language manager will go on some sort of centralized game manager object and your localization responder script will go on any text mesh pro object that you want to respond to language changes. And there's a couple of cool features that uh, I've implemented in this. And uh, the first one is a centralized area to manage your fonts across your game or application project. So what this means is in a centralized manner, I can decide that I want to use uh, this particular font for Korean and uh, this particular font asset for Russian and and then this particular font asset for English. Additionally, we can override these settings at the TextMesh Pro game object level, and you can do that right here on the localization responder. So for instance, on this particular piece for English, I want to use the light italic instead of the centralized selected uh, regular. Then when we play it, We'll see that for English, we've got this light italic font here, and then it reverts back to the normal font for the other languages. Another nice feature is that we can attempt to reuse font material presets. So you don't have to create presets for all of your individual fonts. You can just remap the material preset to the font switch. So this bottom TextMesh Pro object here has a font material applied to it. What will happen when we switch fonts is the responder, when it detects the font switches, it will go ahead and remap these font materials to the new font asset. And that's what allows you to get this preset here applied to the different font assets. It doesn't always look perfect, so you might have to override this if you have a particularly different font. The other feature of the localization responder is a convenient uh, localization label field that you can use to supply to your localization asset. The M2H package uses Google Translation to uh, create the localization changes, and this makes it very easy to provide the label that's necessary for that. So as you can see, we've got a scene here that's already configured with the language manager and localization responder. So let's go ahead and load a new scene that has the GUI already set up, but all of the logic needs to be implemented. We're gonna work with three somewhat unique character sets, but the code can definitely be modified to 
work with any number of language font assets and materials. In this example, we'll be using English, Russian, and Korean. And these translations are basically provided by Google through the M2H package, so I can't really confirm how accurate they are. Pretty sure Russian's pretty accurate. I have no idea on Korean. Before we configure it, let's take a quick peek at the actual scripts behind this. And in our language manager, we have the three public slots for our font assets. Uh, this will be the Korean, Russian, and English slot. We're going to be using an event-based switching mechanism, and that's how the responder scripts will know that the language has changed. So quickly, we're going to define a quick delegate for our event, and then we'll define our event. And we'll have a small method to ensure that the event has subscribers before we actually fire it. And then we have the method that actually does the language set and change. So M2H uses a string. Well, there's a couple of different methods, but we're using the string method to supply the language code that will be used to switch the language. And then we will fire the language event, assuming there are subscribers to that event. And that's all there is to the language manager. So this is basically where you will fit in your own localization package. If you're using the M2H package, this should work fine for you. The rest of this should be usable and modifiable in pretty much any other instance. I have declared this as a singleton, so there will be one instance of this language manager in the project scene. Okay, so let's wire up the language manager. We've got a, uh, a world manager object here that really doesn't have anything other than a transform. And under that, I've placed the camera and the basic default directional light. So let's go ahead and add our language manager to this object. And like I said previously, this gives us three font slots. And you can add as many as you want or take away. And we'll go ahead and drop our fonts in there. So for English, we're going to use regular. And I've set this one up to not have Cyrillic, and then we've got a Cyrillic font, and then we've got our Korean font. And that's all that's really required for the manager. Now for the localization responder scripts, we're going to add those to the objects that have TextMesh Pro on them. And they are a little bit more involved, but still pretty simple. They have overrides for the centralized font asset slots. So if you want to change that on any particular TextMesh Pro object, then you can do that. And they have a slot for the font material and then there's the localization label. And I'll go ahead and add that to one of these so we can see that as we move along. So here's our localization label, font material, and then the three override slots. And we'll be using a private local variable for the text so that we can set this text equal to the computed localization. So on awake, we want to grab our TextMesh Pro object. And then down here uh, in the on enable, we've got an on enable, on disable. These are to subscribe to the event, the language change event, and to unsubscribe to it if the object is disabled. And then in the on enable, when we do enable this, we want to go ahead and call on language language change method to reapply just in case there were some language changes that happened while this object was disabled. And as the event fires and is received in this subscription, this is basically where the logic happens. This is specific to the M2H localization package, and basically it's going to check the current language, and that will return a code. And in the case that this code is Korean, which is one of our slots, the code's Korean. If that slot is empty, we're going to go ahead and apply the centralized game manager instance of that font asset. Otherwise, we'll apply the one that's selected here locally on the TextMesh Pro object. And then likewise, it would check for Russian or I've just got it set as the default English, the fall through. And similarly, if the font material is set, we will go ahead and apply a font material preset to this font. And finally, if there is a localization label, it will use, and this again, it depends on your localization package, but this is the call to set the localization uh, in the M2H package. So you would want to change this to work with your particular localization package. And that's all there is to that. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this localization responder to the second TextMesh Pro object we've got here. And on this one, we will supply the font preset. 
Okay, and the labels that I have set up for this are label demo one and label demo two. And like I said, for the M2H package, that will read from a Google sheet that requests the translation for the particular language codes. So we're almost done. Uh, right now, this won't really do anything because we don't have our buttons wired up, but we do see that the localization has been applied for the default language. So let's set up our buttons. And again, you can use any method you want. The button is the easiest to demonstrate here. So we'll go ahead and add an on click event to this button. We are going to drag the world manager in here and then we will select the language manager script and set language string. And this particular one is English. So we will set that to the English code. Next, we'll do that for Russian. And finally for Korean. So basically all this will be doing is when we click the button, it will call the language manager set language method, which will pass the string that we've set here. It will allow our localization package to switch the language and then fire our event, assuming we have subscribers. So let's give it a shot and see if it works. So by default, we are on English. So this is not doing anything. The Russian, let me come up here so we can see our language switch. So we'll be looking for this to change as we flip to Korean and it applied that. And then look down here because this will show our font material preset be applied to this particular font. You'll notice we only have this one font material preset. So when I switch this, it changes our, our font and then applies the preset to it can see it, it happens pretty fast. But you can see it changing down here on the font titles. And then as I demonstrated earlier, if we want to change one of these fonts to a different font on the local object, we can override that. We'll change this to the light italic so that on English we get the light italic, but Russian it's normal, Korean's normal. And you'll notice that I, even though I've added it here, this does not generate the event. I have to actually call the language change to generate the event. That's why I had to go off and back on. So if I take this out and go back to the centralized font, nothing happens until I generate that event again. Okay, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it helps you in any project that you might be creating with this and uh, enjoy.